Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Givenchy Antigona Small. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's do your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come and join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Woo! It feels so good to be back. Oh my goodness, I missed you guys like crazy. I feel like even though I was only gone two weeks, it felt like 200 years. I might be a little bit rusty, but this... This feels so good, my friends. Oh, yes. All right, so let's jump right into it, shall we? With the first question from Vanessa Cantu. Hope I said that correctly. I want to downsize my collection, but I don't know if I want to sell all my handbags. How to make a good decision of what to get rid of or not? This is an awesome question. Uh, there's a couple different things that I like to do whenever I'm considering downsizing my collection. Um, I like to kind of make an inventory of everything and kind of categorize each handbag. Like I only use this one for travel. I only use this one for dinners. I only use this one for, you know, for work or what, whatever the case may be. Um, I also have a pile of versatility because for me, if I can use a handbag in different aspects of my lifestyle, chances are I'll end up using it a lot more often. So if I have a handbag for each category, I feel that it ends up making, um, making it a little bit easier to transition into that handbag or to be able to, uh, to, tr or to use it a little bit more often. So that's what I end up doing. And after I do that, I like to see how long it's been since I've used it handbag because if I haven't used a handbag between six and nine months that's kind of like my happy zone if I haven't used it between that time what I usually like to do is I like to give that bag one last go one last hurrah and every time that I've done that it kind of solidifies why I haven't used it in that amount of time like maybe the the handle ends up falling off my shoulder or I find the opening to be a little too restricting or whatever the case may be and after I do that I find that it's very easy for me to detach from the bag. But I will say, if you have the slightest hesitation about any of the handbags that you have, if that's the route that you end up doing, what I end up doing, um, but if you have the slightest hesitation, I would wait because the last thing that you want is to have seller's remorse. So if you're kind of like, you know, I wanna get rid of this bag, I really like it, but I don't use it, and you haven't fully detached from it, there might be a possibility that that seller's remorse will end up sneaking up on you, and then you're like, why did I get rid of it? Why did I get rid of it and then you go to purchase it again. Uh, so that's what I end up doing, just doing an inventory of it, kind of separating them by category, seeing which category I end up using the most. And if I haven't used a handbag in a certain amount of time, I'll give it one last go. And if it doesn't work out, then that's when I know for sure to just kind of get rid of it. That's always worked out the best for me. And thus far, I haven't had any seller's remorse. And to me, that's very, very important because I don't want to be able to, I don't want to get rid of something and then I'm like, why, 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 why did I do that type of thing, you know? But that's what I would suggest, and also by having a handbag that you can use in each scenario of your lifestyle, I think really, uh, really makes it easy to be able to downsize. So fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Tiffany R. If you were given the opportunity to win your ultimate dream bag, no bag or designer would be off limits for free. But the catch was you can only carry one of your current bags every day for an entire year. Which bag would you carry every day for a year and which bag would you choose as your prize? <laughs> this is an awesome question. At first, um, I was like kind of hyperventilating just trying to decide of only one handbag because you guys know I like to rotate them. But all of a sudden, after all the smoke kind of cleared, I was like, oh, hands down, it's gonna be this beauty, which is the Chanel Medium Large uh, Classic Flat in the black caviar leather with the silver hardware. And the reason I would choose this one is because it ends up fitting my essentials. Uh, it's very carefree, so I don't have to worry in the rain or anything like that. I don't have to worry about color transfer, what have you. It holds sentimental value to me, so it would have to be this guy. There was a close second, but ultimately it would end up being the, uh, the medium large. And as far as what bag would I choose for my prize, that's very, very easy. Uh, and that would be a Chanel classic flap, but the ones that are filled, filled with crystals. Do you, have you guys ever seen them? I think they're like, I don't know, 13 or $14,000, but they are insanely gorgeous. I've seen them at the boutiques a couple times. And every time I walk by them, I'm like, oh, let me pick up the drool <laughs> because they're so beautiful. So for me, that would be one of my ultimate dream bags to have a Chanel classic flap that is just filled from top to bottom, filled with crystals because you guys know I'm a magpie. <laughs> so fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. 
Next question from Carrie Schofield. Have you heard anything about the Vaquetta leather now being treated? I've heard a rumor that they're rolling out newer handbags with treated Vaquetta to test how consumers like it. Have you heard anything about this? Uh, I have also heard the rumors as well. I haven't heard anything from the stores that I shop at or from any of the sales associates, but if that is the case, it will be very interesting to see because I know a lot of people do like uh, maybe the, mono the bags, uh, the silhouettes that are available only in the monogram canvas, but they don't necessarily go for them just because they're not a fan of the Vaquetta turning color. They're not a fan of getting any water stains. Uh, so I think it's pretty awesome if that is something that they're going to be doing moving forward. Uh, I think it would also be amazing going one step further if it was a service that they um, that they actually ended up offering themselves. Because that way, if you already have a handbag that say you got maybe a few months ago and you're afraid to use it because you don't want it to have any water stains or anything like that, if they offered the service for them to be able to treat the handbags, um, that way you kind of have a little bit more peace of mind. It's coming directly from the brand and you get a little bit more of a warranty, if you will, because it's coming directly from the brand and I assume that they would end up standing behind it. So I think that's really great, uh, but it will be very interesting to see because now you are definitely catering to two types of clients. The client that absolutely loves the regular Vaquetta and how it ages and the client that maybe isn't so crazy about um, the way that that the leather ends up aging or how it ends up oxidizing and they end up staying away from products because of that. But now you have two, so you're increasing your sales um, vastly. So I think it's very, very, um, I think it's very awesome. It'll be very interesting to see how, it ever, how everything ends up unfolding. But um, yeah, so I haven't heard anything. I would love to know if you guys have heard anything, if you have from a boutique, if you've heard it from a manager or whatever it is, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, but hopefully, I will say this as far as for myself, hopefully they don't end up completely replacing uh, the regular uh, raw leather with the treated leather because you guys know I'm a storyteller. <laughs> I like the fact that my bag ages kind of like I do. It has beauty marks and no other bag will be exactly like mine. That's just the way that I feel. But um, hopefully it's something that they don't end up going, you know, getting rid of completely and only sticking to the treated leather. So fantastic question. Unfortunately, I didn't have too much information. But again, if you guys have anything um, that you've heard, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question from Lubes and Lulu. What do you think of the Chanel Gabrielle Hobo? Do you think it will become part of the classic collection? Um, the Chanel Gabrielle Hobo, um, I have tried it on a few different times and unfortunately it is not for me. I do appreciate it because I love the fact that you have an array of different colors to choose from. It also comes in a variety of sizes so that way you can find um, the size that works best for your lifestyle. And um, it's also very versatile because there's different ways that you can end up carrying it. But unfortunately, I just found it to be a little too busy for my own personal taste. Uh, a lot of people that do have this bag, they swear by it. They say that it's one of the most comfortable handbags that they have from their Chanel collection. So I think it's pretty awesome, but like I said, it's not for me. Uh, and do I think that it's going to be part of their classic collection? I really do think so. And the reason I say that is because they went into the archives when it came to designing this handbag. It has quite a bit of history to it and um like I said, it's become very, very popular. I mean, only time will tell if it ends up being a classic bag, but um, just the trend that it's going on and just the history that it has, I really foresee that happening sometime in the future. But um, yeah, I think that they're great. Unfortunately, they are not for me. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Julia Ferris. I read that Louis Vuitton may be discontinuing classic keep balls, not the bandolier. I actually agree that the bandolier version is a better buy anyway, but is anyone else getting uncomfortable with Louis Vuitton discontinuing classic pieces? Thoughts? Uh, I was told the same thing that they're going to be getting rid of the classic heat balls by the end of the year, and I agree with you 100% because for me, the bandolier is definitely a better buy. It's kind of like the best of both worlds, and it's incredibly versatile. Um, now, I see this two different ways. I see it from a business standpoint because anytime you have a, a product that has a very stagnant sales and you see that people are gravitating a lot more towards a different model from it. Uh, it kind of makes sense to kind of get rid of it and just focus on that certain um on that certain aspect, but from a Louis Vuitton lover standpoint, it stings. And it stings because it's almost like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's almost like I'm waiting for the news that they're gonna be getting rid of the Speedy, the Neverfull, the Alma, the, the Noe, just because it's almost like, you know, it's almost, I feel like it's right around the corner type of thing. I don't know, it might be totally stupid and it might be completely ridiculous for me to feel that way, but um, it's just, 
throughout the years, you're, you're starting to notice a little bit more that they're getting rid of this particular bag. They're getting this uh, rid of this particular type of uh, canvas or whatever it is from this type of handbag. So it's almost like you see them, kind of like what you said, you see them taking away and taking away and kind of replacing with um, a different line or a different collection that's maybe a little bit more out there. It's not as classic as it used to be. So <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm waiting for the news, I'm waiting. I don't know, that's how I feel. But um, I, I, like I said before, I kind of understand from a business standpoint for them to focus on the collections that are selling or the lines that are selling a lot better than some of their classic pieces. Um, I just I just really hope, I really hope that we never hear that news, that we never hear, hey, you know, we're getting rid of the Speedy after a hundred and some odd years type of thing. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this because, um, yeah, I think it stings, right? I mean, it's only, it's only, it's only natural that it would sting for anybody that's a Louis Vuitton lover. Maybe, again, maybe I'm crazy, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, but great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Hunter DeMaio. Hopefully I said that correctly. I'm a 19 year old guy that lives in the deep south. It is not normal here for guys to carry a bag at all. So instead I carry backpacks. Although I recently purchased a Gucci belt bag, but I have yet to wear it out because I'm scared to be judged. Should I just wear it anyways and say whatever to the haters or should I sell it and stick to what is acceptable here? You have to remember that people are always going to have something to say about something that they don't like or something that they don't understand. Someone out there is always going to judge, whether it's a handbag, your clothing, your hairstyle, your music, whatever the case may be. So the way that I see it, if you love something, then go for it because your opinion is the only one that matters. You know what I mean? Because like I said, someone's always going to say, well, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Blah, 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 this, this, and that. It's almost like you worry about yourself and I'll worry about myself type of thing. You know know and I think that the Gucci belt bag is such an awesome bag so congratulations on that and absolutely go out there and rock it like it's nobody's business and if someone out there has something nasty to say to you don't pay any attention to it don't try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them because that's really what they want and just ignore them hold your head up high and just keep rocking your bag you know that's what I do <laughs> because no one out there is going to tell me what I should or shouldn't do or what I should or shouldn't wear type of thing so I say go for it rock your bag congratulations on it it is fabulous and don't pay any attention to anyone out there that has something negative to say about what you like because your opinion is the only one that matters so fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Shop Addy. I finally got my hands on a pochette Matisse but I feel it's quite heavy and I can only put very narrow items in it. It can't hold as much as I thought it would. Should I sell it off or do you think I'll regret it once it's gone? For now I love my Neo Noe the best for its functionality. What do you think? Uh, the pochette Matisse, this guy right over here, it is a very popular handbag but it doesn't always work out for everybody and um, for me I would much rather take a functional handbag over a pretty popular handbag any day of the week because I know that if I end up going for a handbag like that it'll end up just sitting on my shelf and that's not really what I want to do. I want to be able to enjoy the handbag and to be able to use the handbag. Uh, so what I would suggest uh, before you decide to sell it off try it out one more uh, one more time put your items inside and see how it fits and then if you just know you know if you know that's not going to work out for you at this point in time then I would end up selling it and maybe go for something completely different because a functional handbag that's just where it's at because you know that you're going to enjoy it a lot more you're going to use it a lot more and you don't have to worry that you can only fit this item or that item You'll be able to uh, you'll be able to to carry your daily essentials in there without necessarily having to leave something behind type of thing. Uh, so I I personally love the Pouchette Matisse and um, you know if you're scrolling through Instagram or if you see YouTube channels and people are like oh my gosh it's the greatest bag it's the greatest thing since sliced bread you have to have it type of thing. It's like okay it's great but it doesn't always work out for everybody you know what I mean. Um, I had someone actually reach out to me <laughs> and. Um, they weren't, um, <laughs> how can I put this? They weren't very um, happy with the fact that I don't own a Gucci Marmont and that it's not for my lifestyle. I've said it before. I appreciate them. They're extremely popular, but um, they're not for me. And I had someone just say, how can I do that? What kind of handbag uh, lover was I? I? My handbag collection isn't, uh, isn't complete without it type of thing. And it's like, okay, I, I mean, I get it. I know that a lot of people love it, but 
At the end of the day, it doesn't work out for me, regardless if it's popular or not. I don't care about that because I know it ended up sitting there. So your taste might end up changing. And at this point in time, the Pichette Matisse isn't for you. Um, who knows, maybe in a year's time or two years time, it might be for you, it might not. But uh, like I said, a functional handbag over a pretty popular handbag any day of the week, I will do it. So um, yeah, I would just try that out. See uh, how it works out for you, try your items inside. And if you know for sure, it's not gonna work out, I would end up selling it. So fantastic question, good luck, and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Mom Amy 7 what do you do to relax, and do you watch beauty gurus? If so, who would you like to meet? Uh, for relaxing, I do a couple different things. I really should do them more often because you guys know that my mind goes a million miles a minute. Uh, so I like to listen to classical music as loud as I possibly can in my house. Just sit there in front of uh, the speaker and just have a cup of tea and zone out zone out, listen to every single instrument, and that really ends up helping me out. Um, I also like to go to the beach and either go to the pier or sit on the rocks and listen to the waves crash. I don't know what it is about waves crashing that just <laughs> mellows me out like big time. Um, and I also like to go for a walk, um, not necessarily for exercising, but just to be able to just go out there, not really think about anything, and just uh, let my mind just run wild type of thing. So I'd have to say walking, the beach, and listening to classical music are three of the things that really uh, end up relaxing me the most. Um, and do I watch beauty gurus? Uh, I have in the past, not too often, so I don't know them well enough, uh, but there's so many talented people out there Maybe I should watch them a little bit more often. That way I could get some of this <laughs> under control. But um, no, I, I don't. Not, not too often. Um, all right. Next question from Annabelle Reyes. What is your favorite wine, beer, and champagne? All right. Uh, my favorite wine at the moment is Pinot Grigio. I am still on the Pinot Grigio kick. Um, there's a specific one. It's called, I think it's called Pepperwood. Pepperwood? Yeah, that's the one that I'm always posting on my Insta stories. Um, I get it at uh, a Trader Joe's. It is awesome. I think it's better than the one that I talked about from Costco a few months back on one of my favorites videos. So I think it's called Pepperwood Pinot Grigio. It's just amazing and it's super cheap too. <laughs> so that's one of my favorites. As far as beer goes, um, I don't drink beer too often anymore, but when I do, I love White Rascal Whip Beer. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm not really into the whole, um, like sours or IPAs or anything that's a little too strong with, uh, with hops. I can't do it. Uh, so the Whip Beer from White, from, from White Rascal, my goodness, is, is awesome. So it's, it's strong enough, but it's not too strong type of thing. I'm kind of like a weenie when it comes down to beers, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. <laughs> uh, and as far as champagne, oh, oh yes. One of my favorites is Vuv Clicquot. I think it is awesome. Um, and it's not, too, it's not too expensive or anything like that either. So that's definitely one of my favorite uh, champagnes. But I would love to hear, what are your guys' favorite wine, beer, or champagne? If you wanna, if you wanna share, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, all right, next question from Monkey. What is your favorite vacation bag? Of all your luxury bags, which one does your hubby appreciate the most on you? Uh, my favorite vacation bag, it's the bag that I use every single time we travel. It is this beauty, which is the Chanel wallet on chain. The reason why it's my favorite is because it's small, it fits my essentials, and it's also very carefree because of the caviar leather. So whether it's raining or whether it's, you know, it's 100 degree weather, whatever it is, I don't have to worry about, um, about the leather on this. I think it's awesome. It just fits the perfect essentials. And the fact that I can also put it underneath my coat if we are in a crowded area and I don't have, um, I don't have this big overwhelming bag makes me feel a little bit better. That way it's kind of closer up against my body. Um, and I don't necessarily have to worry that someone might end up slipping their hand inside of my handbag or anything like that. So anytime I travel, I try to go for very, very small, uh, for very, very small handbags. Um, okay. And out of all of my luxury bags, which one does your hubby appreciate the most on you? His favorite handbag from my collection is actually my GST. That guy right over here. He's, he's been saying that for years. It's one of his favorite handbags, but when it comes to a bag that's on me, um, he likes this guy, which is the Chanel Medium Large in the black caviar leather with a silver hardware. I told him, I said, okay, is it possibly because this is my favorite handbag in my collection or what is it? He's like, no, 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 I think it looks great on you and it really complements um, your body frame. So 
This is his bag of choice on me, but his favorite handbag in my collection is the Chanel GST. Uh, but fantastic questions and hopefully I was able to answer them. All right, and the last question from Lux Lover VB81. What are your favorites? Not bags or small leather goods though. Favorite food, dessert, drink, and restaurant. <laughs> um, okay, my favorite food has changed over the years um, just because my taste buds have changed, but I'm gonna have to go with good old pizza. I freaking love pizza because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the craziest about like toppings either. I couldn't care less about pepperoni or this, that, or the other, but for me, the fact that there's cheese and that there's bread, oh yeah. I can live off cheese and bread my entire life. I don't need anything else. I think it's amazing. So pizza, it's almost like any time we can't really think of something to eat over the years, it's like, oh, let's order a pizza. Or we have family coming over. We have friends coming over. Let's go for pizza or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> pizza for sure. Um, all right, and my favorite dessert. That's kind of tough because I have a major, major sweet tooth. So... For me, I'm the type of person that I would much rather eat dessert over a full-on meal any day of the week. Um, I like cakes, <laughs> cakes, pies, cookies. One of my favorites has got to be cheesecake, again, because of the cheese, so cheesecake, definitely. Cheesecake and cookies, it's kind of a toss-up between the two. Um, my favorite drink, I love champagne. I love champagne, uh, but there is, it's not, well, it's a spumante, but, um, or sparkling wine, I should say, that is one of my all-time favorites. We have it in the house 24-7, no matter what. Even if I don't drink it, it's always in the house. Um, and it could be because I have um, memories attached to, to this brand, so maybe that's why I drink it, or that's why I like it. But my favorite drink is actually uh, Martini and Rossi Asti Spumanti. I know it's not for everybody. Some people are probably looking at me like I'm crazy. But it's sweet, and like I said, I have so many memories attached to that um, <laughs> to that sparkling wine or to that spumante that, um, yeah, it holds a really special place in my heart. So I, always, I don't always, always drink it, but I always have it, so it's a favorite. I don't know if that makes sense or not. <laughs> and uh, my favorite restaurant, um, I don't really have a favorite restaurant. I tend to go into, well, we, I love going into like hole in the wall places for whatever type of uh, cuisine that, we are, that we're craving. Um, but at the moment, Two of my favorite places to go, um, there's a chain in San Diego called Borden Brew for sandwiches. They are amazing. If you guys live in San Diego, if you live anywhere near a Borden Brew, try their sandwiches out. They are fantastic. My favorite is the Turcado, turkey and avocado. <laughs> I mean, I, it's awesome. It's absolutely amazing. And the other restaurant is called Seasons 52. Um, I love their seafood and um, it's just a really great uh, ambiance, a really nice environment. So those two are the ones, but all in all, I don't really have a full-on favorite restaurant. So those are some of my favorites. I would love to hear your favorites on these topics if you want to share in the comment section down below. I was also asked on my 200th MMQA if I can incorporate a handbag of the week. This was requested by the N1R1. If I'm not mistaken, my apologies if I butchered your name. Uh, but I think this is pretty cool. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a handbag that I have in my collection. It could be the handbag um, that is very, very trendy or a hype bag or whatever it is. That way we have a little bit more to talk about in the comment section down below. Uh, so this week, I wanted to talk about the Louis Vuitton Wave Collection. So it's not a specific handbag, it's more so a line, but I've been getting a lot of questions on this collection, uh, especially since now a few more people have it out in public. And um, I did talk about this on a recent MMQA, and I still stand by what I said before. To me, it looks like a Saint Laurent Gucci had a baby and it was a Louis Vuitton with multicolor on it. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the details that kind of take away from it for myself. Uh, some people really like the collection. Um, they think that some of the handbags are very versatile, they're very comfortable, and I think that's awesome. But just personally for me and my own taste, um, I don't know what it is. You know, I think it would have been really nice if they would have come up with their own design and not necessarily have it in a sense mimic uh, to other fashion houses that have very, very popular handbags, um, you know, within themselves or with, within their, uh, their house. So it could be that, but um, the Wave collection is uh, unfortunately not for me. But I do appreciate it, but um, 
I don't know what it is, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. What do you guys think? Do you love it? If you have the wave collection, any part of the, any part of the handbags, uh, let us know in the comment section down below, but either way, let us know what you think. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Um, now, for this week's lineup, I do have a shoe haul video. If you follow me on Instagram, some of you might already know. And the other video, I haven't decided, but either way, you will see me two more times this week. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.